What we're looking at here is the design for a random website that is built with Plum. Anything you see on this screen is part of the design of the website itself and not part of Plum. Except for this label on the left that is visible only for site editors who are logged in. The label warns the editor that his page is currently still in draft. Hovering over the label will reveal a small form that may contain various workflow states and some space for writing a revision note. As a designer, I've designed for countless plum based websites and the thing that always annoys me is that I have to figure out a way to include a Plone user interface into my site's user interface. This is why I usually choose to run a second Plone instance skinned with vanilla new Plone, for instance, as an editing environment. But what I lose that way is WYSIWYG entirely. Hence I came up with a solution where the site designer would need to include merely an icon or a button or a link for editors who are logged in. For this site, I included the small icon at the top left of my site design. I would like to emphasize again that all that we see here is part of the design of the site, not of the CMS, nor of its editing tools. So I am already logged in and decide that I would like to edit something on this page. When I click the button, then a bar will appear that pushes my entire page down a bit without altering a single pixel of what the page looks like. Except that all the parts of the page that I, now playing the role of a content editor, I'm not allowed to change. These parts of the screen are dimmed by means of a semi-transparent overlay that borrows from the site's body color. This way the content editor can really focus on the only thing that currently matters to him, the content. The bar runs in an injected iframe so that it is never affected by any kind of CSS whatsoever that is used on the web page and vice versa. This is very important to realize as it also means that I can use Plone out of the box. The bar is something that I never have to style if I don't want to style it. Please bear in mind that this bar is only intended to be seen by site editors, not by visitors of the website. Having a closer look at the bar, we see that there's a set of buttons on the left that represent content editing functions. On the right there is a set of buttons that represent what I would like to call page functions. For instance, this button that replaces the traditional Plone Actions menu. And next to it a button that replaces the Plone Add Item menu. Please mention that I added many more functions to the Actions menu than we are currently used to in Plone 3. What you see here is a language dropdown. You use it to set the language version of the content that you're editing. It has nothing to do with the language setting of the user interface of the editor, which uses a separate setting. It's convenient to have a language switcher on this bar, because some multilingual websites, like the one you're looking at here, only have a language chooser on the front page of the site. With this drop-down, I don't have to get back to the home page to switch language. Besides that, the language choice style would not be content editable and therefore dimmed if available on the screen at all. Next to it we see a happy glowworm button, which may be used to activate glowworm. The button with a wrench on it activates what I would like to call the properties drawer. The properties drawer has an extensible form on it, with a field set for every group of settings that is applicable to the current page. The height of the drawer adjusts automatically to the height of the tallest field set that is available on the form. The carousel interaction pattern allows for full utilization of the available horizontal width. This is just a rough sketch. It could look a lot prettier. The controls on the left are all active now, but that's only because not everything is prototyped yet in this example. In the real world, these buttons would always be there if one or more rich text fields would be available on this page. Buttons would be greyed out if they are not applicable to the currently selected element. Any button like these for an ordered or ordered list 
would only turn to an active state when you click on places where elements of this sort would be allowed. The page header, for instance, is not such a place. The node dropdown has two functions. One, it reflects the node type of the last element that I clicked on. But you can also use it to change a paragraph into a header or vice versa. The button bar is an extensible model. An extension that you see here is a comments and track changes module. The blue foot indicates that I'm currently tracking all the changes I make. Very similar to Microsoft Word or Pages. The other two buttons are for turning on comments or adding comments. When I select a piece of text and I add a comment, I would like to see something like a post-it appear next to it that I can write something on that I would like to share with co-editors. The properties drawer that I demonstrated before is actually not a solution that I care for so much myself as a generic solution. Another useful interaction pattern for this sort of thing is a modal panel. This panel would be configurable and all the different field sets are neatly tucked away under these tabs.